Hello my friends, today we are editing this uh, photo over here. This is a photo I took in my backyard of this tufted titmouse. And uh, let's see, if we go to Lightroom, we can see I took this at uh, 1, 3, 20 of a second, f6.3 with my A1 with 200 to 600 millimeter lens at 493 and ISO 200. So this is my raw image as you can see over here i have done zero edits in it this is straight from the camera and i just put it into luminar neo and now we're gonna edit it here we'll go to edit and let's see when we analyze this image we can see first of all it is underexposed but before we deal with that let's just crop it first so we can crop it I have a lot of megapixels to work with. My camera is around 50 megapixels, so we can crop pretty good, pretty tight in. Something, we'll go with something like that. Let's see. And that looks good to me. Enter to commit to that. And now Let's work on the overall look. We're gonna increase the exposure, something like that. We'll add a little bit of contrast, maybe eight. Highlights will bring down a little bit to maybe around negative 20s. And then for shadows, I'm gonna open the shadows completely. That way I get more details all over on the bird and all over all. Now I will close the develop and then I'll open it again. And what I want to do, I want to um, accentuate the catch light into the eye. So for that, I will just go to whites and let's see, I will increase the whites, something like that and take down the blacks a little bit. And now I will just mask this right onto the eye with a small brush. And that should just bring a little bit more attention to the eye. So this is the before and after the eye. So now I want to add more uh, whites. So bring up the whites and take down the blacks to create a little bit more contrast. And because we have the um, histogram now and we can turn on those clipping warnings I will turn those on to make sure I'm not blowing out my highlights and now I can drag the whites to the right until I start seeing red and then I back it up and then go up again until I find the perfect spot something like that looks good for this image and the blacks they are good where they are right now I don't mind that I uh, blow out the I clip the shadows over the beak and the eye. Those parts are naturally pretty black on this bird. So that looks good. I can turn off these clipping warnings and maybe the whites were a little bit too white. Let's go to the, our edits and our last adjustments. Take down the white just a little bit more because it was a little too bright. Great. So now we've done all of that. Next thing we want to play with color a little bit. This is a pretty, you know, boring picture when it comes to color. It doesn't have a lot of color. The bird is pretty gray. The background is, you know, pretty desaturated. So I will go to color. I will go into the HSL and I want to accentuate these orange tones into the bird. So I will go into the saturation and increase the saturation of the oranges. And that looks better already. This is the before, this is the after, before and after. Great. Now looking at the bird, I'm thinking, oh man, it would have been cool if this bird had some blue and these feathers instead of this gray, but this bird, it's gray as it is, but you know what? It's my bird. I will change it. We will make it look bluish today. To do so, I will just, uh, you know, go to toning. As you see the shadows, the darker the gray feathers are in the shadow. We don't want to affect the white, just the shadows. So I will go into my shadows. Increase the amount to 100%, increase the saturation to 100% so I can see exactly with which color I'm working with. And once I found the blue that I think it will look good for this bird, something like that, then I will take down the saturation to what it looks good. 
And now I will mask, mask it carefully just into those gray feathers. So make my brush a little bit smaller. And now I can just paint it just to make this board a little bit more interesting. I know some of you guys are going to complain about this because you should not change the way the bird look, but it's my bird. We're just doing it for creative purposes. So there you go. We have a blue bird today. Tomorrow might be purple, who knows? So we put some blue in there. Maybe we'll add a little bit under the tail over here. Maybe a little bit here too. And no, I do not like this one over here. I will erase the one from the tail. And maybe I'll erase with 50% from this one too. Too much. And then the overall color, it is too much. So I'll take the whole adjustment down a little bit. Just to give it a little blue tint. Just so it's not gray. So this is the before. This is the after. Before and after. This is great. By the way, you guys, check it out at 100% um, zoom. Look how sharp this 200 to 600 millimeter lens is. It's an affordable lens. Um, it doesn't cost much and it's so sharp. I'm very happy with it. I have not done any sharpening to this. This is straight from the camera. Command zero to fit the screen. And now uh, we are moving into, let's see. Now we're looking at this image, this stick over here bothers me, so I want to completely remove it. But before I do that, I want to export my image and I will show you why in a second. I'll just save it into my desktop and I'll click save. All right, now that my image is saved, I will go to, let's say, erase and I will erase this stick. I need to make my brush a little bit bigger and let's see I will do it in uh, smaller portions because if I give the computer too much at once it won't do a great job so we'll erase this portion first and then we will move to the next one all right move into the next section all right erase and now uh, we'll go for the last portion All right, we got some bending over here, but we'll take care of that in a second. I also want to shorten this stick over here just because I feel like it's leading my eye out of the frame. So I will make it shorter. We'll start with this portion first. Oops, I missed a little part over here. And then we'll go down to somewhere around there maybe. Great. Now we removed all the distraction and we want to fix the background a little bit, get rid of those bending and maybe see if we can finish out this stick over here. So I'll go into my layers, click on this plus icon and then load image. We will load the image we just saved a minute ago. So now it's open here into my images and if you double click on it, it will be loaded as a layer. So you see, this is our first image. And then the second one, it's the one we just imported that still has the sticks. What I want to do with this image, I want to, this layer, I just want to mask a portion where the background is good. So I'm going to use a brush and let's see, I will just take a section of this background. Something like that. And now I will move this section if we go to properties we can move it and you see i can move this section and now i can flip it and i can put it over here with i have the bendings it looks like i took part of the tail over there so i can go back to masking and erase this part all right and i can even reduce the opacity to about 65 percent to kind of blend it in and that will just cover a little bit of that. And let's see. We still have quite a bit of um, pixel bending over here. We'll deal with that in a different way now. I will go to my overlays and I will use the same overlay I've been using 
For the last few edits, I will increase the opacity to 100%. You see it's this kind of green bluish color and I will change the blending mode from normal to soft light. And then with this uh, overlay selected, I will go to color and adjust, adjust the hue shift more towards the blue because I want to make the whole image more blue to kind of make the colors go together with the bird. Great. Now I'll go to layer properties again and I will mask out the bird. I will just use a radial gradient and kind of drag it out like this. I want to squish it out turn it around, kind of the direction of the bird. Let's see. Something like that should work. Let's see into the properties and that looks better. I will reduce the opacity to maybe around 60%. So let's see now before this overlay. This is before the overlay and this is after. Now I want to also create a color vignette. So I will go and add the same overlay. And this time I will change the blending mode to multiply and reduce the opacity. And then we will go to color and the same thing. We will shift the hue to some blues Let's see, that's purple, that's more blue, something like that. And then once you go to layer properties, I will just mask with the brush just on the outer edge of the image to just create a color vignette. All right. So something like that. Let's see before the vignette. This is the before the vignette and this is with the vignette. The whole image, this is the before and after, before and after. Now I want to go back to my original image. I want to blur out the background a little bit just to kind of make this bending go a little bit more away. So I'll go to structure and put it at negative 100. And now I will go to masking and with the brush, big, nice, nice, soft brush, I will just paint around in the background and that should soften things a little bit and we should not see all that bending so much. All right, let's see this. And that helped a little bit. We can further work on that, but maybe working on details and I'll reduce all the details, slider, small, medium and large. And on the masking, I'll use the brush again. Nice, soft, large brush and kind of the same thing. We will just paint the effect onto the parts that we want to soften up. And there you go. All right, much better. Now let's see the whole image before and after. This is our before, this is the after. I do not like the way this stick kind of ends in here since we just kind of erased it to that point. So I will try to bring in a portion of the other image. So I will bring in the image we just saved in the beginning of this tutorial, bring it back in as a layer. I'll increase the opacity to 100%. And I will just mask, I just want to use uh, this end of the stick. So I will just select it like that. Now we'll go back to properties and I will make it smaller. I can rotate it. Let's see. And then I need to bring it down onto my stick. Maybe use it as an end cap for my stick. So we won't be able to tell that we just chopped it off. I need to make it just a little bit smaller. We need to kind of put it in here in a way that will work. And I'm not sure about that. That might work. I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to erase parts of it that I took too much with me. So let's see.
Trying to paint more, I erase too much from this corner. And that doesn't look too bad. Could be better. You can take your time with that. But now it's a little bit too bright for that section. So with this layer selected, I will go to develop and take down the highlights. And that looks better. Maybe even bring down the blacks a little bit. And now we can really see where we need to delete a little bit more of it. So go back to layer properties, go to masking, to brush and erase. And this time I will go a little bit closer to it. Maybe bring, let's see, where did I go? Bring the backs, blacks a little bit more up. Something like that. It's not perfect, but it's all right. Go back to tools and let's see. This is our image. This is the before. This is the after. Before and after. And I am pretty pleased with the way it ended up. I hope this was helpful and you learned some new techniques. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing and I will see you in my next video.